Hi, and thanks for choosing Purple Host. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to set up and use Multicraft. So first of all, you will have needed to buy a dedicated server and select Multicraft when you are buying it. You will then be emailed an email, you will click a link and it'll take you to a page which will show you your details. You also do want to make sure you write all these down, as once you click continue, you won't ever be able to see them again. Then click the IP it gives you and it should take you to the Multicraft website just like this. Then click login, put your name and password, and then just click login. So currently we have no server set up. So let's start by setting up a server. So first of all, go to the left and click create server. Then for the name, you can put whatever you want. We'll just put pebble. Player slots, you can have however many you want. So literally just anything like that. And then assign to user, you want to put admin as that is the account name. So we'll assign it to you. And obviously the IP is here. And then the port we're going to put as 25565. The memory will be how much RAM you want. So my dedicated server has 16 gigabytes. However, we're just going to give it 6 gigabytes, which will be 6,144 megabytes. Now this is in megabytes, so make sure that you don't put it in gigabyte. And then for the jar file, we can just type in server.jar. And then just click create. So now we have our server set up. For some reason the player slots don't save, I don't know if it's because I set it too high or what, but we'll just change this to let's say 79. So here we can see all the information we put in. The first thing we're going to scroll down to is the jar file, where you can click this icon and it'll give you a few versions that you can run. So of course, select any of your versions that you want from here. You may notice there isn't a Java 17, however if you do open a ticket with our support team, we can help get Java 17 for you. Then of course we have our advanced permissions. So there's a few things that you might want to do here and then also permissions and then at the bottom we'll show the players that are currently online so we're going to continue with the jar file by going to files on the left and then going to ftp file access once you're here it'll take you to this page where it asks for your multi-craft password so i've got it saved so i can just click that and then just click login so this is our file manager on the left you can make a new directory a new file or you can also upload a file. And then above that we have move, delete, copy and rename. So this is your pretty normal file manager. So obviously it works pretty much the same as it always would. So then we're going to click back and back again. And then at the top we're going to go to the users tab. So currently we just have our own user. So now we're going to create a new user. This would be a sub user, meaning that they'd be able to look at the console, the chat, they'd be able to change stuff in the configs. Well, you can actually give them certain roles so they can do certain things, but that's basically what this is doing. So if you want to add someone, click create user, then put their username, we'll just put pebble for this. Their global role, you can give them the permissions that you want to give them. We'll just give them administrator. Global FTP access, you can give full access. If you didn't give them full access or give them read only, they wouldn't actually be able to upload or change any files in the file explorer that we looked at earlier. The language you can obviously change but you don't really need to and then the theme choose whatever you want for that and then for the email you need to put the email that they signed up to multicraft with so for example i'm just going to put just a random thing at gmail.com and then for the password this is going to be a password that you actually make for them and this will also be the password that they have to sign in with so you can set this to whatever you want we of course don't recommend you set this to your account password though so just type anything you want maybe some numbers and then just click create and then we'll click back and as you see we now have a user called pebble with that email so it also got rid of the global role so once again you might want to go in and uh, actually change them once again yourself i'm not sure why it does that so there we go we click save we go back and now it has administrator so the next tab we're going to go to is the settings tab so here there's a few things you can change you probably won't need to change most of these but stuff like an auto save interval you might want to and then we've also got the advanced settings down here. And of course you can change all of these as well. I do like to select the Minecraft EULA as automatically accept because I often forget to actually accept it. Right, so we're now gonna go back to the service tab and then click on our server. And then from here, we're gonna go to the left and click on advanced. And then we're gonna go to scheduled tasks. And then we're gonna click new task. So this will basically schedule a task as the name obviously states. This means that, for example, you can make the server restart at the same time every day. And you wouldn't have to do anything as it would just do it all by itself. So, you want to put the name, or just put as restart. 
the status will leave as scheduled and then the time you want to do it so obviously uh, pick whatever time you want and this will be the first time that it runs and then if we want to have an interval so let's say you want to do it every five minutes you'd have to select interval if you did it at scheduled time it would just do it once so if we put an interval we can then select our minutes hours and days and obviously your numbers for that as well so i've set it to two hours and then we'll go on to the command so as you can see there's loads and loads of different things that you can do here now we're going to focus on restart and restart if empty so restart if empty is a bit different because this task will try and run but if the server isn't empty it won't actually run so the only if the server is empty it will restart however if we click restart it will kick everyone out and then restart the server so we'll just select restart we don't need to put any arguments for this, but you would need to for a few things. You can hover over the question mark and it will say, for example, the text for the say command. So if we had it as admin say, then you would type what you wanted to say in here and it would say that. And then we can just click create at the bottom. And then we can click back. And as you can see, we have our time scheduled, our interval, and as you can see, it is scheduled. So that's how you make a task. Then we can click back and then go to advanced once again. And then we're going to go to the users tab so this is where once again you can just give full access to ftp and also a role i'm not sure why it always removes it uh, it's pretty annoying but if you set it in here as well then it should hopefully fix it all so once you've set whatever you need just click back and then once again in the advanced menu we're going to go to the my sql database and then once again we're going to click create database it may then bring up this dialog box and we'll just click OK. And then what you want to do is you want to open this in a new tab. So you can just right click it and click open link in new tab. So we have it up here. Then go back here, copy the username and we can put that in the username there. And then for the password, you want to copy this, go here and then just paste in the password. We can then click go. And then this is the place where you set up all your MySQL databases. And then if you want to delete the database, you can just click delete database on the left as well. So that's pretty much everything you need to know if you're just starting out. And the last thing we're going to show you is how to delete your server. So let's say you wanted to start completely fresh. You could go to the left and just click delete server. You can change this to a yes if you want to delete everything, including all your worlds. And then we can just click delete. And as you can see, our server has now been deleted. So hopefully this video was helpful. If you do have any questions, feel free to either ask them in the comments and I will try to reply to them, or you can join our Discord, which has 24-7 support. Anyway, thank you for watching today's video, and hopefully, I'll see you next time.